Did you know diarrhea is hereditary? It runs in your genes. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So after four episodes of The Last of Us, I think we can all agree this show is amazing. It deserves all the praise because not only is it an excellent adaptation of one of the best video games ever made, but it's a fantastic show, period. But The Last of Us can achieve something massive and that is breaking the dreaded video game curse. It has begun. Now, I know some of you will say that the curse was already broken by shows like Arcane. But the thing is, video game adaptations still get a really bad rep. Now, The Last of Us might have finally cracked the code, and it could change everything for the genre and bring about a golden age for video game adaptations. And it was destiny that his kiss would break the dreaded curse. Excuse me, person? Yes, Doug the manager? What? What's that video game curse? Oh, good point. I guess before we explain how The Last of Us breaks the video game adaptation curse, we should start by clarifying what this curse even is. Now, if we're being real here, there were actually plenty of really good adaptations, especially in recent years like Arcane, for example. So there's no curse? Well, it's all about perspective. You see, video game adaptations started in the early 90s with movies like Super Mario Brothers, Mortal Kombat, and Street Fighter. Those movies were not good. In the last 30 years, there were many video game adaptations. Now, of course, not all of them are terrible. Some of them are actually pretty good. There have been plenty of really good video game adaptations, though they're very much diamonds in the rough. The majority of them verged from, this is kind of bad, but it's so campy, I kind of like it, to, oh my God, somebody call the cops. This movie's committing a crime against my earballs. Mother, you're alive. Too bad you will die. So naturally, video game adaptations, they got a bad reputation. And that's how the video game curse started. But why are they so bad? Well, I think it comes down to how the adaptations treat the games. Generally, there's very little respect given to the source material. For the longest time, video games were considered to be a lesser form of entertainment. Now, to be fair, most of the older games didn't have the best of stories. So for the adaptations, the filmmakers had to create their own plots. The thing is that the filmmakers clearly had very little respect for the games because those were really awful adaptations and pretty terrible movies all around. Not to mention that generally, all the aspects of the games were completely misunderstood or entirely changed in the adaptation. Like Super Mario Brothers turning the Goombas into humanoid dinosaurs with tiny heads. <laughs> On top of that, they transformed the colorful and magical world of Mario into basically Gotham with a bunch of dino people. Now, I realize that I'm being very harsh here, but I promise you that this is not a rant. But we do need to trudge through some of the negatives to explain why The Last of Us is so important. Hey, person, what are you wearing? That looks real familiar. Oh, you like it? This is actually the same jacket that Joel wears on The Last of Us. No way, he gave it to you? <laughs> no, it's, no, Doug, it's not his jacket, but it is the same brand. This is the flannel-lined wax trucker jacket from Huckberry. They're the sponsor of this video. After getting one, I understand why Joel chose a Huckberry jacket to weather the apocalypse. It has a soft blanket lining, which makes it great for the fall and spring when you can also just wear a t-shirt underneath. But then in the winter, it's waxed and weather resistant Martex 7 ounce sailcloth keeps you nice and warm. It's also flexible, good for combat with hordes of the undead. This jacket's made in the USA from this hard wearing waxed canvas. And even before The Last of Us came out, it was Huckberry's number one selling item of all time. It is an awesome jacket to own for everyday wear, but also if you want to cosplay as Joel, it is a must have. Just like we see in the show, it wears great and only gets better with age. So to get your Huckberry jacket, click our link in the description below. You won't regret it. This jacket is awesome. Now back to what I was saying. Now since the 90s, video game stories have evolved a lot, but the adaptations kept the same mindset. Many of the recent video game adaptations are actually more faithful to the games, but they're only accurate on the surface. Unfortunately, it's always lacking in depth. This is such a shame because many of these adaptations have the potential to be really good. Take a recent adaptation, Uncharted. The games were developed by Naughty Dog, the same company that created The Last of Us. Uncharted is very popular for being a really fun adventure with great stories. One of the main problems with the adaptation is the failure to capture the spirit of the characters. Tom Holland is a good actor and very likable. Unfortunately, he's just not Nathan Drake because he ends up being mostly Peter Parker again. Whereas Drake is basically Indiana Jones, Han Solo, and John McClane all mixed into one guy, or simply Nathan Fillion and Firefly. Drake has been spotted in Sector 18. Oh crap. 
Any chance this is Sector 19? The movie also fails to recreate the magical dynamic of Drake and Sully. In the game, they were partners for years, having an almost father and son relationship, while in the movie they barely know each other as this is their first ever meeting. So that whole dynamic is completely lost, and I have no clue why that is. Maybe it's because they did a young Drake, so they decided to make this his origin story. This makes it all the more infuriating considering that the four Uncharted games are well written and offer rich source material that ends up being completely mishandled in the adaptation. They ruin the story. They ruin the story. And this is something that happens with so many video game adaptations. They fail to capture what made the games great and they end up having some really poor plots. So it's a double whammy that ultimately leads to this bad rep that most video game adaptations have. But the majority of them are just fine. None of them changes the genre or its reputation, and more importantly, nothing that breaks the video game curse. The only one that got close to it before Last of Us is Arcane. And in case you didn't know, this show is an adaptation of League of Legends. Arcane stands on its own. It's incredible, but not because it's faithful to the game. The show is a visual masterpiece. It's one of the most beautiful animated creations I have ever witnessed. But since Arcane is an animated show, it didn't change the video game adaptation perspective entirely. And that's because there's some prejudice against animated shows as well, which we won't get into, but usually live action media gets more respect than animation. Not to mention that for every Arcane, we get about five adaptations like Halo. Go away. AI off. I'm introducing myself to the rest of the team. Go disappear! This is actually very similar to what happened with the superhero genre. Right now, we live in a golden age for comic book based movies and shows, but not too long ago, superhero adaptations had a really bad rep, just like video game adaptations. Sure, there were many great comic book movies and shows, but the perception finally changed with the Dark Knight trilogy. This is actually something we discussed in a video about how those Dark Knight films changed this genre forever. After Batman Begins, the audience and studios suddenly started taking this genre very seriously because Nolan took Batman and the world he inhabits very seriously seriously. And then the Dark Knight basically bitch slapped everything that existed before it. What the hell is you? Oh, Larry! Larry, you can't just... Oh, Larry! Oh, are you all right? How did you... Larry! Then all of a sudden the reputation of superhero movies transformed completely. Superhero movies became must-watch event movies that dominated the better part of a decade. Bottom line, what the video game adaptation needs is its own Dark Knight. And The Last of Us could be the show that changes everything. Light on the reading, but it has some interesting pictures. Oh, no, no, no. How the hell would he even walk around with that thing? The writing is incredible, the directing on point, and the acting makes you feel some powerful emotions. And speaking of acting, Pedro Pascal perfectly captures who Joel is. The same with Bella Ramsey as Ellie. All the actors are doing great work. Nobody looks like they're just doing cosplay of the characters from the game. I mean, it is a really cool jacket though. Now, of course, it helps that the show is based on one of the greatest games ever created. The story of The Last of Us is one of the best stories ever told in the genre, so long as the writers of the show understand and respect that source material. Luckily, the creator of the game, Neil Druckmann, is part of the show. And then there's Craig Mazin, who previously made Chernobyl another incredible HBO show. And that adds so much credibility and skill to The Last of Us. And it's clear that Mazin has a lot of respect and understanding of the game. I got tears in my eyes. It looked so good and it was so creepy and beautiful at the same time. And it captured a lot of the things we we're trying to do with the game, but it was there in real life. The Last of Us is a very faithful adaptation of the game, but the creators have the power of hindsight and they're adding scenes that end up enriching and expanding things that were already good, while at the same time improving on scenes that now hit differently in the show. For example, the ending of the first episode. In the final moments of the episode, Joel, Ellie, and Tess are captured by a soldier. At first, there's panic and fear that they have been caught by a Fedra soldier, but then Joel and Tess realize that they know the guy. Joel sold him some pills earlier in the episode, so there's history there. Now this parallels the moment of the other soldier 20 years ago. In both cases, there's a sense of relief. The past soldier saved Joel and Sarah from the infected, and there's a sense of hope that there's this savior who's now going to rescue them. The present day soldier knows Joel and Tess, so they should be off the hook. It's a sense of relief. But then that sense of protection turns into dread. The past soldier turned his gun on Joel and Sarah since they might have been infected. And the present soldier uses his authority to threaten and scan the trio. Ellie attacks the soldier because she knows what that scan's going to show. And all of a sudden, Joel is back to that moment when another soldier pointed a gun at him and Sarah. Joel was powerless to stop that soldier and his daughter died in his arms. That is serious trauma. So the second Joel is put in that situation again, he is activated. All he sees is the soldier who killed Sarah. And now in his PTSD, Ellie becomes the daughter that he lost. He attacks the soldier and literally punches him to death. The whole thing is brilliant. Joel's pure rage, Ellie's reaction, that look on her face isn't fear or shock. It's as if she feeds on Joel's rage like she's fascinated by the violence. 
almost as if she wanted the soldier to die. And at that moment, when Joel and Ellie look at each other, it's like there's some kind of understanding between them. With her eyes, Ellie accepts Joel as someone who will do terrible things to protect her. This moment is very different in the game. It's less personal, and it's more about the reveal that Ellie is immune. Now, of course, in the game, there are other moments that capture what the ending of the first episode does, but this is a great way to end the pilot episode because this scene basically captures the Joel and Ellie connection perfectly. The show also uses its time very well. Take Tess, for example. The game gives us some stuff with Tess, but not nearly enough. The way the show expands on Tess in the second episode made me far more invested in her than I ever was in the game, especially because of her dynamic with Ellie. How old are you? 14. Wow. Mommy, I mean, you got some balls on you, sister. I adore the first scene with the trio at the start of this episode. First of all, it ends up being a really funny scene, like this moment. Can I have a gun? Absolutely no. not. Okay, Jesus, fine. I'll just throw a f sandwich at them. But more importantly, you can see how Tess latches onto the idea that Ellie is humanity's hope for a cure, and how she's trying to bring Joel out of his apathy and cold outlook on the world. Now, something similar does happen in the game. In both cases, she spent so much time not caring, closing her heart to the world just like Joel, because there was no hope. The moment she sees that Ellie is immune, it's like a switch is turned on for Tess. Since the show can spend more time with Tess, we see her becoming this mother figure to Ellie, because Ellie represents a second chance. Not just a way to fix the world, but also a redemption for her. It's ironic because just as she starts regaining her humanity, she gets infected and then loses her humanity. But she dies for someone she cares for. Say who you can say. And then there's episode three, also known as the episode that just changed everything. The one that made everyone cry and laugh at the same time. Look, you all know this, the episode is a masterpiece, but to stay on course, this episode is a masterclass on how to adapt something that is already perfect and somehow make it a billion times better. Like in the show, Joel and Ellie go to Bill for a car. The difference is that Bill is still alive and Frank is already dead at this point. He committed suicide after being infected and he and Bill had a falling out. The thing is that Joel never met Frank and he doesn't even know that he existed. Bill is a complete loner who warns Joel not to commit to anyone because he's lost so much to the point that he prefers to be alone so he never loses anyone else. But of course, Joel's got Ellie now, so Bill represents the reverse example of what he should do. The objective of reaching Bill and getting the car from him happens in the show, but in the process, The Last of Us explores the powerful themes of living in a hopeless world. Paying attention to things. It's how we show love. And most importantly, answering the question of why would you keep going if you have no hope? The sad yet optimistic story of Bill and Frank is an inspiration. Bill and Frank gave each other a purpose to live. They made a life for each other in this paradise in the middle of hell. They represent an opportunity for Joel to wake up from his melancholy, to find a new purpose. And you were my purpose. Joel and Ellie don't need to meet Bill and Frank to learn this lesson because this is so much more than just getting a car or some toilet paper. Bill was a protector and he found his purpose in Frank. Joel is a protector too and now there's this girl who might save humanity and his purpose can be protecting her. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do and God help any mothers who stand in our way. This one episode doesn't just break the video game curse, but it's also the kind of episode that sets a new standard for television and storytelling as a whole. And that is the best form of adaptation. We don't need a photocopy of the game because that'd be predictably boring for the fans of the game. And it will end up being a lifeless imitation. And a show is a very different medium than a video game. So you can't just refilm all the cutscenes and call it a day. When you're adapting something like a video game, changes have to be done smartly. We are telling more. There is so much in between. The importance of these scenes is that sometimes changes and additions need to be made in adaptations. They make the source material richer, but at the same time, they allow for the adaptation to feel like its own thing. But The Last of Us does a lot more to change the perspective of video game adaptations. And one of the biggest factors is HBO. HBO created some of the greatest shows in the past 30-something years. The Sopranos, The Wire, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, Succession, True Detective, Band of Brothers, and Barry are just some of the few that come to mind. They set the bar for the golden age of television. Now, of course, HBO is not the only place for great shows. AMC had Breaking Bad, FX had The Shield, Sci-Fi had Battlestar, and, and Showtime had Dexter. I mean, at least the first four seasons. But again, it's about the perception and track record. HBO has been delivering consistent quality shows, and this gives Last of Us a bigger sense of credibility because the narrative here is that The Last of Us is the video game adaptation that will break a 30-year-old curse. A show that is based on one of the greatest video games of all time, airing on HBO, a network that sets the bar for television. Well, gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. 
I mean, just look how Game of Thrones suddenly put fantasy on television. Can you name any big fantasy shows before Thrones? No, I cannot. You cannot, that's right. But now every show tries to be the next Game of Thrones. Every network wants its own medieval fantasy show. And Hollywood has a stake in the success of these video game adaptations. In fact, in the upcoming years, we'll be getting countless movies and shows that are based on games. Why is that? Well, that's because video games are an amazing source of content. There are so many games with rich stories like The Last of Us. It's a flourishing medium that now rivals books and comics. And many games make a hell of a lot more money than some movies. So there's a lot of money to be made. And of course, the potential of financial success isn't an assurance that the adaptations are gonna be any good. And that is why The Last of Us is so important. The show can finally break the perception of the video game curse. It can set the new standard for all these other adaptations. Just like The Dark Knight changed the comic book adaptation genre on film, and how Game of Thrones changes fantasy book adaptations on television. So, do you think The Last of Us breaks the video game curse? What other games would work great as shows? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.